Expressing your beliefs as a Christian these days can land you in prison in other parts of the world and in jail here in the United States, as witnessed recently with the case of Kentucky clerk Kim Davis. Another area of the culture war over faith that is huge is in schools and colleges. One man who knows that battle well is Mike Adams. He joins us now to tell his story of standing up for his faith in a politically correct academic world. Dr. Adams, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, first of all, tell us about the battle you faced at University of North Carolina, Wilmington because of your faith. Well, that was a protracted battle. Uh, I was a professor who had won uh, Teacher of the Year twice uh, across the entire university, and I converted to Christianity shortly after that. And then later on, I became a pretty outspoken uh, critic of intolerance in higher education and the whole business about diversity and tolerance on college campuses is very false. It's very one-dimensional. And so I spoke out, and as a result of that, a few years later, I was denied a promotion to full professor, uh, but I'd made some good friends along the way, including David French, uh, who was with the ADF at the time, and then later went to, to work with the ACLJ. And we got together and decided that we were gonna fight the thing in court, and it was a seven-year battle, uh, but uh, we, we took them on. You finally won then. We finally won. It took a long time for us to actually win the legal aspect of it, to actually um, get the case thrown back in court after it was uh, thrown out of court on a legal matter. And once we got that thing in front of the jury, uh, just now it's been about a year and a half uh, since that opinion, uh, or, or that verdict, I should say, it didn't take the, uh, the jury two hours to deliberate to return a, uh, a uh, good verdict for us on all counts, mm -hmm. unanimous. So you are still at UNC Wilmington. Yes. How are you treated on campus? Well, you know, it, it depends. If I teach a class over in the business school uh, where the conservatives are, I'm, I'm, that people shake my hand. But uh, no, seriously, around my department and in co the College of Arts and Sciences, uh, around the humanities and social science professors, uh, not very well. They don't have a lot to say to me, but I don't care. Uh, I'm, I'm not at a secular university to win a popularity contest. I'm, I'm there to try and, and fight back and restore the Constitution and uh, stand up for truth. It must take a lot of courage. Well, are you seeing anything change on college campuses when it comes to respect or even tolerance for Christians? Uh, really, no. Uh, things have, have gotten really bad over the course of about the last 20 or so years. We live in this era uh, of speech codes, for example, on college campuses where they try to ban so-called offensive speech, but that's dishonest. They're only going after conservative and Christian speech. And things have gotten really bad. Uh, I do see some organizations popping up, like the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, for example, that are fighting back and groups like the ACLJ and ADF and groups like that that are actually taking on some cases. And so uh, hopefully, and with my verdict and, and with my victory, that's about to happen, uh, but things have gotten pretty bad. I hope they've stabilized, but in terms of an improvement, uh, we just have a long way to go. Our, our campuses have absolutely been taken over by the enemy. Well, that's what's happening on college campuses. Uh, what about other fields? What, other, what about other professions? There are a lot of people in various yes. different types of workplaces who are, are strong Christians and would like to be more outspoken about right. their faith, but they're afraid of losing their jobs. What would you say to them? Well, my situation's different because I, I had tenure before we moved on to this legal battle over, over my promotion. And so things have worked out very well for me because I've decided to take a stand and I'm essentially one of the only ones doing that at a secular university. And so I get a chance to speak all across the country and travel and do great interviews and, and really have a good time speaking about uh, the issue. But I understand for people in the workplace, the normal workplace where you don't have tenure, uh, it's, it's more difficult. But the solution to that is for people to get together if all of the Christians decided that they were gonna stand up. You know, when one goes out there on a limb, if the other said, hey, wait, that's the way that I believe too. There is strength in numbers mm -hmm. and uh, Christians have to get organized and they really need to support one another. You know, when, when I went into this seven year battle, uh, that was a lonely thing because there were other professors on the campus who just wanted to whisper to me, you know, uh -huh. maybe send an email or call but not be seen in public with right. me. Right. Uh, that nonsense has to change. Absolutely. Uh, people need to, a lot of them came out after the verdict uh, was, uh, was, 
came back, but they should have been standing up before. Absolutely. And that's what I'm calling on them to do. Yeah, well, you know, you have such strong faith, but it hasn't always been that way. In fact, quite the contrary. Yeah. You were um, a very devout atheist, then agnostic. Right. Talk right. about how you came to where you are. Yeah, well, when I was hired in 1993 as a very politically left uh, atheist, and, and I was a little militant, you know, telling the secretary in the office to turn off the Christian music uh, when I came in the room, you know, just all that stuff I battle against now. Uh, after a few years as a professor, I happened to be doing a teaching exchange down in South America. I was down there for 17 days uh, teaching at another university, did a tour of uh, a prison for, it was only three hours. And when I was in there, first of all, the stories of what they do to people, shocking confessions out of people, shooting, they shoot people in the back and mm. claim that it was a thwarted escape attempt right. and things like that. I actually saw a beating of a prisoner uh, who was being beat with a, beaten with a small bat. I, I walked into a room in front of the guards who were taking me through there. I wasn't supposed to see it. Just really brutal. And I, I spent about three hours in there. I went walking out of the prison and I said, you know, wait a second, this relativistic worldview of mine that says you shouldn't judge other cultures by the standards of your own culture. I said, that doesn't work in the real world. I mean, if that were true, then it would, would have been wrong for us to liberate the Nazi concentration camps. That was a judgment of another culture. So I just really snapped out of it. And then a few years after that, I was visiting a mentally handicapped murderer on death row in Texas similarly did as part of my profession, just an interview. I taught about his case in class and uh, at the end of the interview, he quoted John 3.16 to me, and he he just garbled it, you know. But I, I, I sat there and looked at him, and I said, you've learned to read and write, and you've read the entire Bible. I said, you know, I call myself an educated person. I've never read the Bible. Mm. And I was actually kind of ashamed and embarrassed about right. that. And I actually went home and started to read the Bible, and I, I read the King James, so I had to stop a few times to read some apologetics and all that. It was slow working my way through the whole thing, but at the end of nine months, I was convinced, really from an intellectual perspective, that it's the Christian worldview is true right. and therefore worth defending. Wow, inspiration coming from a mentally handicapped man on death row, yes. fascinating. Well, you've written a book called Letters to a Young Progressive, where you say you've been where they are and have some advice for them. Yes, uh, in, in a sense, the, the letter really, uh, or the, the series of letters in the book is really written to my former self in a sense, but it's actually, I tell parents it's extremely important for them to prepare their kids uh, and to have worldview training, and I actually uh, talk about, a lot about how those conversations are, are supposed to look. And what kind of a response are you getting from progressives about the book? Uh, well, the progressives, I don't think, are reading it too much, but the parents who are worried about their kids uh, losing their faith in college, I hope are, are getting something out of it. All right. Dr. Mike Adams, thanks yes. so much for your Thank time. Thank you. Thanks for having me.